Hey everybody, it is Tuesday, May 5th. I hope you guys had a good Star Wars day. I'm joined here today by Pua, Moana's pet pig. And I hope you guys are having a great day. Let's take a look at the stuff I've got for you today. Reminder, we had changes in the learning opportunities this week. So take a look to Miss Summerfeld, my posts uh, that I put out there for you. And take a look at those. Class Hangout. We've got those on Thursday at 10. I look forward to seeing you guys there. Uh, head on up for free lunch and breakfast up at the school. If you have any questions, please contact me. I'd love to hear from you guys. So make sure you're staying home and staying safe. Taking a look at the academic things for you today. Uh, math, Prodigy, and IXL. Uh, I'll talk about the IXL standards here in a second, but take a look at those. I also did a whole video uh, reviewing those, or I put links of other people reviewing those. So take a look at those if you have any questions on the math. AR and IXL for reading. Make sure you pay attention to my social studies post. I put something in there. It's a surprise, so don't get uh, too loud about it. But take a look at that post and send me some. I know I already got one from Aiden, but if any of the other guys have one, so make sure you send me a post. Uh, right there in social studies, PE, music, art, and guidance. Um, take a look at those. Those are all, uh, everybody had one posted yesterday. So take a look at their new information from Mr. Buckley, Mr. Warner, Ms. Lesnar, and Mr. Newkirchen. Again, I did go through and give you guys a review on all of these. It's kind of a long video, so feel free to just skip ahead in that video to the one that you want. I tried to put this at the top, like the, the topic at the top of the video so you can skip ahead or go back if you want just something specific but I did cover all of these in a review as well as I put in some other videos that is not me explaining but somebody else might be able to help you there the city of ember we are gonna finish this story tomorrow not today but tomorrow uh, so we are really getting down there uh, a little bit of a shorter chapter today a little bit longer chapter tomorrow and then we'll we'll have it finished up so we're getting down there. If you remember, um, here they got into the river. They found the uh, the letter, all of our instructions. They kind of deciphered it. They are they followed it all the way down to pretty much where it ends. And now they're kind of searching and trying to figure out what to do. They think they found the the way out. Um, but they just realized they forgot to leave a message knowing, telling everybody else that there is a way out. So they kind of forgot to do that. And Poppy and Lena and Dune have made it out. And that's kind of where we're picking up now. So I've got their cam candles and they are creeping along this rocky path. And we're on chapter 19, A World of Light. As they squeezed past the rocks at the entrance to the path, Dewan thought he saw the candle glance off a shiny place on the wall. He stopped to look at when he saw what it was, he called out to Lena, who was a few steps behind them. There's a notice. He said it was a framed sign bolted to the stone and printed sheet behind a piece of glass. Dampness had seeped under the glass and made splotches on the paper, but by holding their candles up close, they could read it. Welcome, refugees from Ember. This is the final stage of your journey. Be prepared for a climb that will take several hours. Fill your bottles with water from the river. We wish you good fortune. The builders. They're expecting us, said Lena. Well, they wrote this a long time ago, Dune said. The people who put this here must be dead by now. That's true, but they wished, it, wished us good fortune. It makes me feel as if they're watching over us. Yes, and maybe their great-great-great-grandchildren will be there to welcome us. Encouraged, they started up the path. Their candles made only a feeble glow, but they could tell that the path was quite wide. The ceiling was high over their heads. The path seemed to have been made for, this great, for a great company of people. In some places, the ground beneath their feet was rutted in parallel grooves, as a wheeled cart of some kind had been driven over it, and they had been had walked a while when they realized that they were moving in long zigzags. The path would go in one direction for some time, and then turn sharply and go the opposite way. As they went along, they walked less and less. The, sloped, the path sloped relentlessly upward. 
and they needed their breath just to, and they needed their breath just for breathing. The only sound was the light pit pat of their footsteps. Lena and Dune took turns carrying Poppy on their. She had gotten tired of walking very soon and cried to be picked up. Twice they stopped and sat down to rest, leaning against the walls of the passage and taking drinks from Dune's water bo- bottle of water. For how many hours do you think we've been walking? Lena asked. I don't know, Dune said. Maybe two, maybe three. We must be nearly there. They climbed on and on. Their first candles had long long ago burned down to the last inch, and there was and their second candles finally and when their third ones were about halfway gone lena began to notice that the air smelled different the cold sharp-edged rock smell of the tunnel was changing to something softer a strange lovely smell as they rounded a corner a gust of this soft air was, uh, swept past them and their candles went out Dune said i'll find a match but lena said no look no wait look They were not in complete darkness. A faint haze of light shone in the passage ahead of them. It's the lights to the city, breathed Lena. Lena set Poppy down. Quick, Poppy, she said, and Poppy began to trot. Keeping close to Lena's heels, the strange, lovely smell of the air grew stronger. The passage came to an end a few yards farther along, and before them was an opening like a great empty doorway. Without a word, Lena and Dune took hold of each other's hands, and Lena took hold of Poppy's, and when they stood in the doorway and looked out, they saw no new city at all, but something infinitely stranger. A a land vast and spacious, beyond any of their dreams, filled with the air that seemed to move, and lit by a shining silver circle hanging in the immense black sky. In front of their feet, the ground swept away in a long, gentle slope. It was not bare stone as an ember, something soft, covered like a silvery hair, as high as their knees. Down the slope was a tumble of dark, rounded shapes, and then another slope rose beyond that, way off in the distance as far as they could see. The land lay in rolling swells with clumps of shadow and low places between them. Dune, cried Lena, more lights, she pointed at the sky. He looked up and saw them, hundreds and hundreds of tiny flecks of light, strewn like spilled salt across a blackness. Oh, he whispered, there was nothing else to say. The beauty of these lights made their breath stop in his throat. So if you remember in this story, they've lived underground their entire lives. And everybody they know and everybody else they know have never been outside. So I think what we're seeing is they've walked out. And it's not daytime, it's actually nighttime because they see stars and a moon. So kind of take a, a minute to think about this. These people have never seen, never been outside of this underground city where the only light has always been lights. They've never seen like a, a moon or starlight of any kind. Or felt the wind or seen grass or any of those kinds of things. They took a few steps forward. Dune bent to feel the strands that grew out of the ground, almost higher than Poppy's head. They were cool and smooth and soft, and there was a dampness on them. Breathe, said Lena. She opened her mouth and took in a long breath of air. Dune did the same. It's sweet, he said, so full of smells. They held their hands out as they feel long stems as they waded through them. The air moved against their faces and their hand and in their hair. Hear those sounds? said Dune. A high, thin chirruping sound came from somewhere nearby. It was repeated and over like a question. Yes, said Lena. What could it be? Something alive, I think. Maybe some kind of bug. A bug that sings? Lena turned to Dune. Her face was shadowy in the silver light. It's so strange here, Dune. And so huge. But I'm not afraid. No, neither. I'm not either. It feels like a dream. A dream, yes. Maybe that's why it feels familiar. 
I might have dreamed about this place. They walked until they came to where the dark shapes billowed up from the ground. These were plants, they discovered, taller than they were, taller than they were, with stems as hard and thick as the walls of tree of houses, and leaves that spread out over their heads. And the slope beside these plants, they sat down. Do you think there's a city here somewhere? Lena asked. Or any people at all? I don't see any lights, Dune said, even far off. But with this silver lamp in the sky, maybe they don't need lights. Dune shook his head doubtfully. People would need more light than this to see, he said. How could you see well enough to work? How could you grow food? It's a beautiful light, but not bright enough to live by. Then when shall we? Then what shall we do if there's no city and no people? I don't know. I don't know. Dune didn't feel feel like thinking. He was tired of figuring things out. He wanted to look at this new world and take in the scent of the feel of it and figure things out later. Lena felt the same way. She stopped asking questions, drew Poppy onto her lap, and gazed in silence at the glimmering landscape. After a while, she became aware that something strange was happening. Surely, when she had just when she had first sat down, the silver circle was just above the highest branch of the tall plant. Now the branch cut across it, and as she watched, the circle sank very slowly down until it was hidden except for a gleam of brightness behind the leaves. It's moving, she said to Dune. Yes. A little later, and it seemed to her that her eyes were blurring. There was a fuzziness in the sky, especially around the edges. It took a while to realize what was making it fuzziness. Light, she said. I see it, said Dune. It's getting brighter. The edge of the sky turned gray, and then a pale orange, and then a deep, fiery crimson. The land stood out against it on a long black rolling line. One spot along this line grew so bright that they could hardly look at it, so bright that it seemed to be, take a br bite out of the land. It rose higher and higher until they could see it in a fiery circle, first deep orange and then it yellow, and too bright to look at any longer. The color, seemed, the color seeped out of the sky and washed over the land. Light sparkled on the soft hair of the hills and shone every shone through the lacy leaves of every shade of green sprang to life around them. They lifted their faces at the astonishing warmth. The sky arched over them, higher than they could have imagined, a pale, clear blue. Lena felt as though it, a lid that had been on her all her life had been lifted off. Light and air rushed through her, making a song, like the songs of Ember, only this was the song of joy. She looked at Dude and saw that he was smiling and crying at the same time, and she realized that she was too. Everything around them was springing to life. A glorious racket came from the branches, tweedling notes, peeps, purples, high sharp calls. Bugs? wondered Dune, imagining with awe of the bugs that could make such sounds. But then she saw something fly from a cluster of leaves and swoop down low across the ground, making it a clear, sweet call as it flew. Did you see that? He said to Lena, pointing, and th there's another one, and there. There, 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 repeated Poppy, leaping from Lena's lap and whirling around, pointing in every direction. The air was full of them now, and they were much too large of, to be insects. One of them lit nearby into a stream, into one of them lit nearby on a stem. It looked like with two bright black eyes and opening in its mouth that was pointed like a thorn, sent forth a little trill. It's speaking to us, said Dune. What could it be? Lena just shook her head. The little creature shifted its claw-like feet on the stem, flapped its brown wings, and trilled again, and then it leapt into the air and was gone. They leapt up too. They threw themselves into exploration. The ground was alive with insects, so many that do and just laughed in helplessness wonder. Flowers bloomed among their green blades, 
and a stream ran at the foot of the hill. They roamed over the green-coated slopes, running, sliding, calling out to each other with each new discovery until they were exhausted. Then they sat down by the entrance to the path to eat what was left of their food. They untied Dune's bundle, and Lena suddenly cried out, The book! We forgot about the book! There it was, wrapped in its blotched green cloth. Let's read it out loud while we eat, said Dune. Lena opened the fragile notebook and laid its contents in front of her. She picked it up with a carrot with one hand, and she picked up a carrot with one hand, and she, with the other, she kept in her place on the scribbled page. This is what she read. The next chapter, chapter 20, our last chapter that I'll read tomorrow, is called The Last Message. And so we'll find out what that notebook says tomorrow, and we'll read that uh, tomorrow. We'll finish up The City of Ember. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Put up some pictures. Here's uh, of our state wrestlers coming through the hallways. Uh, just giving them a high five and our, our coaches there. And I also had uh, Alex's dad up here when he was here talking about sovereignty. So I got a couple pictures there. I hope you guys are enjoying the story. I know Pua really enjoyed it. Uh, it's kind of weird thinking about these people that have never seen um, the outside before. So all these weird things like grass and wind and birds really probably throwing them off. So we'll find out more tomorrow. Maybe you can make some predictions of what you think is going to happen. How do you think the story is going to end? And, uh, if what's going to lead to or happen to the rest of the people in Ember. So kind of think about that. Uh, last chapter tomorrow is going to be a little bit longer, but I think it'll, we'll finish it off tomorrow. And I hope you guys are having a great day. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope you guys are doing well. And I will be talking to you guys later. Bye.